Hi all, welcome to Natural Wonders. I'm doing a painting today of an Irish ruin. Basically got a ruined part of a, like a castle or something of that nature. And uh, I'm just going to paint this in gesso first of all. So let's just run the colours across the screen for you all. That you're going to need to paint along with us on this one. And I'm going to get first stuck in first. I've just got some black gesso on a paper plate. And a small little brush that I'm going to use. I'm just going to... Block all this in, in gesso first, black gesso acrylics, just all of that, paint up to that top edge, the ruined part. Block it in underneath, and then I'm just thinking about that top edge at the moment, top edge of the wall, which is pretty. Uh, random to be honest with you just there uh, if you get a little hairs coming off of it it's fine to just take that out there we go always like I said this is just a little ruin in Ireland Islands full of beautiful ruins like this. It's like it's gonna be like a early morning scene. I'm looking forward to doing this for you all, I really am. It'll be such an enjoyable demo to do. Just come a bit too low there. Because lower down, out there, we're gonna have a strip along that and then block it in behind. I'm going to go over where I want this wall to be now and just follow it right onto the end. Pretty simple shapes on top of this ruined wall. Just half collapsed, falling down. Blocking behind that. And will basically come off somewhere to about there. You don't have to be exact though when you're doing this gesso because I'm going to put liquid white over this anyway. So chances are that uh, if you're doing it mistakes, you're always going to have plenty of opportunity to fix it. Just that top edge. Broken down wall. Just there. Right. Now, I might as well just blocking over this side as well just to get that in there basically and I want that to come out there so you can put some dark in and just go around you can use a smaller brush if you like to get these details but for the big details I don't mind just using this brush I actually like it it does the job quite quick. You get a nice sharp edge still. And it's not too perfect neither. It looks natural. Right. I'm just going to come along the bottom of that I want that to go down it'll go down into some a grassy area that's just underneath it and like I say any smaller details like up there and stuff I'm going to do with a, a small brush I might just do the side of that window side of it as well. Yeah. And then turn below it. Like so. Turn that in. Now I'm going to switch to a smaller brush now. Right now I've got a bit of water in a jar. I'm just going to get some of that on the liner brush. But I've slightly thinned it down with some water just slightly 
so that it flows nicely for us. And then just up in here, I'm going to do the tops of this. Got a, rock, a brick there, got a stone. It's definitely stonework, is this? These old ruins abandoned. Just there, we've got a little window. Which I can paint in. There. And you leave that light area there. Just run out of paint, so straight back into some more. Paint along that edge. There. And then you could just paint behind that. Just these little fiddly areas where I like to just take my time, use a small liner brush and it pays off. It's a perfect guide for you though for what we're doing. Perfect guide. See that just painting on the outside of that window. Just there. All the way down. Maybe a bit more water again with the paint just so that it flows a little bit better. And then if I go in the middle of that, all the way down. And then I can neaten the edge up first of all on this side. And then on the other side. I'm going to go down the centre of this one. By doing this as well with the gesso, later on in the painting when we come back to it, we'll be painting it in oils. So this gives you good practice for when you're doing the oils. Just do this first, get, get your eye in, get the practice, and then you can go in there confidently then. You see, if I make a mistake with this gesso, I can just paint back over it again with white. So there's no stress, basically, it's just easy. It takes a little time, and then you have a little bit of patience, but that's a good thing. So relaxing doing this. The prep work is so important when you're painting in oils. Prep work is just as important as the work you're doing the painting itself. Because this sets up everything that you're doing in the painting. something like that and then I can just it's a lot easier to paint behind it because it's just a, a matter of just going straight down come up behind that carefully turn all this in just block it in lovely
just at this top edge. I'm going to go down. Don't want to be perfectly straight. It does come down, but it's coming down at a slight angle. Get some more water, some water, some more paint, and I can just block in behind that either side. And later on, we'll put liquid white over this. And some people will be like, well, why? Why are you doing that? You're having to do it twice. Because it means that when I do do it the second time, it'll be perfect because I've got a good guide to work to. And the liquid white only just covers it up. You can still see through it. I use this technique a lot. delicate work but it's not rocket science it's quite simple Again, block behind that. That's what we wanted. Same up in here. This actually steps a bit more. It's got little steppy stones coming over there. That's it. And then I'm going to turn my brush the other way. Straight over top there. Straight through. And then it's just a matter of blocking in behind that. Nice and easy. Right. Now, just on the end of here, need to just draw in these lovely rock uh, stones to the edge of this wall and then they come down slightly and then it goes up down now at this stage I'm going to actually thin the acrylics the gesso the water not for this part now but for the part I'm going to do after this this is just a, a bit of that ruin just followed on basically. So I can put some of that in there. Put a bit behind it. Right. Now I'm just going to use water. Straight water mixed with a lot of a small amount of acrylic. See that's really watery, extremely runny. So that when you use it on there, see how it's transparent? That's how you want it to be transparent, like so. And then with that transparent colour, I'm just going to actually make an indication of here. That goes down slightly, you see. Just down there. Just a couple of little indications with that watery colour gives us what we want there. I just want to know that that goes down there. You can even sometimes just get your finger and just go over it. Because I'm only after an indication of where that goes off. Fine. Now I know that in there I'm going to have a lot of light. So just to show you, I'll dry it off and I'll put that back in, a bit of white underneath it and just leave a strip of that dark colour. But that's fine for this stage. So we're going to start off with a one and a quarter inch brush. And with that I'm just going to use ultramarine blue the lizard and crimson together the 
lizard and crimson and ultramarine blue together and then into that I want the tiniest amount of black small amount of black and that lavender colour now I'm just going to try that first of all just to see what that looks like a bit too much to the red side so I just needed a bit more blue into that so I'll just try it first just to make sure that I've, I've got the, the tone that I'm wanting so I want a good mixture of that paint in there tap it out so that it's got an even distribution of paint throughout the bristles there and then just in the top edge I'm going to come along and I'm just going to use crisscross strokes along the top edge of the sky quite a darkish tone just towards the top don't forget it's always mixing with this liquid white therefore it's going to get lighter and lighter the more you blend just keep that in your attention. Now I know that I want a glow, so I'm just gonna take my hair there. I'm just gonna actually put in a small amount of that colour just in there because I know that I'm having a glow of light just in this area here. So I'm just gonna use that and gently blend into that. So it goes from dark to light. But I've used a lighter colour down in there, you see, where I've run out of paint. And then you can just blend it together with that brush. I want to blend it together quite well. Same on this side. Bring that colour down. And just let that blend to this darker tone that we've got higher up. pick the colour up and bring it back down again slightly but that's something like what I was trying to get just step back and have a look and you'll see little areas where I just want to blend it a bit more just got to step back for that though right what I'm going to do I'm just going to use a clean brush again inch again. Now this time I'm going to use just a lizard and crimson on its own. As a, I'm using this as a separator. See that? Just a lizard and crimson on its own. But I don't want it too strong. So I might even just tap into a bit of white just in there to stop it being quite as strong as it is. Just uh, crimson will eat up your whole world if you're not careful so just be careful and put some white with it because then I just want to use that colour and just over in here this part of the sky we've got a, a small hue of pink just a little bit of pink in there so I'm just using the crimson for that Blend that up slightly with that brush. And down in here, just allow it to go soft. Now, with this brush, I'm going to just blend underneath that slightly. And then I'm going to put a hint of yellow in this area. And now, what I want to do is get this colour, this crimson colour. I must say that it pretty much was dark pretty quick so I need a bit of that crimson there and then allow it to blend up into this colour so that you can't see where one colour starts and the next colour stops as I always say blend it together so it's nice and even same in there, I want a bit more of that bluey tone coming in there actually so I can touch right up into that and then bring it back down into there just 
by blending, bringing a bit of that colour back down. Just have a, again, another good step back. Now we're actually on the horizon, just on here, we've got a little bit of that colour, just on the horizon area. And then we've got a cloud that I'm going to do up in there. I'm just going to come back now. Might even just use a clean brush just to make sure I don't drag any in. In fact, I don't mind if I drag a little bit in there. there. Use a clean brush now. Just with that clean brush and blend all that nice and softly together. So it's just got a little tiny pink glow basically and then I'm just going to use a small amount of cadmium yellow smallest of amounts so see that? That's how small the amount is that you need for this you do not need a lot Start off in this corner with this yellow colour and allow it to blend up And I'm more yellow in this corner, just in there. Even have a bit of that yellow coming over there slightly. Blend it up towards where that pink is. And then leave this area white basically. And come back and just gently blend the smallest amount of that yellow into this area. So a bit of it shows just through them windows. Now, having fun with this, what I need to do, I just need to use a filbert brush and I'm going to, when I mix this colour up, just down in here, I'm going to get the white, which had a bit of pink in it, I'm going to get a bit of that crimson into it, see, nice pinky white, that's what I'm after, good amount of paint on the brush. Now, just up in here, above the tree line, we've got a cloud that comes in, just there. So I'm just going to paint that in nice and solid in the centre. See that? And this dark that I put behind is just enough to make it contrast against this. I just get the shape at the moment of it, get the correct shape of the cloud because as it comes up in the top of the cloud here, it actually starts being wispy, you know, and having breaks in it. Uh, just towards the top edge of the cloud, and with that, you start to see a few little individual clouds that are breaking off just up in there. them wispy clouds that we did in the Australia painting very similar to that but just from this one cloud maybe a couple just up in that area make it so that it's definitely looks like it's coming off of this cloud that we've got in there stuff going on. And the bottom of it is pretty, pretty beautiful. That sharp edge. And then just up in there I'm going to paint a few more little individuals They're popping off this cloud. separate from it. Just put a 
got everything in there. All sorts of things going on. It's some real lovely interest then in what you're doing with this. There's a lot going on. So with that, I'm just going to use a big brush. Make sure there's no hairs in it. And I'm just going to come gently over that. And I'm just going to blend it. Just softly. Even though I'm in there. I just want to softly go over that. Without destroying it, I'm just defusing these cloud, this cloud. Just there. Uh, now I know that there's a few little ones coming off of it, just below as well. So we've got more of a blocked in cloud. I want to get some straight white. And just in the centre of where the cloud is, I want to put some more of that white. And that's just straight up titanium white make it look a bit more solid just in that area and it is quite a solid cloud up to that point and then it breaks off into the wispy bits that's it that's it. something about myself you can play for hours with just just the clouds again back to my big brush and just use it for blending. Take off any excess paint you just picked up. I just want to gently just disturb that colour in there. Just blend it and allow it to just blend. 